This video is brought to you by Light Gaming PCs. Now, it's a wild time to buy a PC, build your own PC, but Light Gaming PCs has a wide array of pre-built gaming PC options at affordable prices, offering a wide variety of performance levels. Check them out in the link in the description box below. They've got everything from more budget-oriented builds to higher-end builds and streaming-centric builds and everything in between. Now, on to the video. Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video after a bit of a break over the weekend. And boy oh boy, did a lot of things happen the past few days. Halo Infinite had a stealth drop, quote unquote stealth drop. I think a lot of people were expecting it. Available right now on Steam, available right now on Xbox Game Pass. That is the multiplayer, by the way. But want to talk a little bit about that and the astronomical numbers it is pulling right now. A bit of an Elder Scrolls 6 update that is getting a lot of traction right now, and I'm really not sure why. I feel like this is news that people could have deduced really easily, but we'll talk about that. And Hellblade Sun was sacrificed. Sacrifice now enhanced on PC as well, so that's pretty cool. Great game. Would highly recommend you to play it. All right, first up, Halo Infinite did in fact drop yesterday on PC, Steam, Xbox Game Pass, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, all of that good stuff, and the game reached an all-time peak player count over the last 16 hours it's been out, I believe. Uh, maybe it's been out a little bit longer than that. No, it's been 24 hours since it dropped uh, the Xbox press conference i believe yesterday was like at 1 p.m or something like that uh eastern time uh but it peaked at 272,000 players and seemingly it did not really fall victim to any crazy like download restrictions or anything like that because i know steam was getting bombarded and remember that's 272k on steam alone which is already an astronomically high number but then you have to factor in people that played the game through the xbox app and i know that might not be a you know grandiose amount of people however that game every a lot of people were expecting it to play through that on game pass so i think there is a decent number of people playing it there and then of course the xbox community as well the game is currently sitting at a mostly positive reception on steam 10,000 reviews at 72 percent positive you know, Halo multiplayer isn't what I was really super looking forward to about Halo Infinite. I'm really excited for the campaign component, but it is pretty cool that we did have this early drop, and I think people are going to end up really enjoying it. I'll play the campaign through Game Pass. I'm not going to drop the 60 bucks on it, but... um. Yeah, a lot of people having a good time with it, and it's doing crushing numbers over on Steam. Now, we'll see how sustainable it is. Obviously, there's a lot of buzz right now. We'll see how it shakes out a uh, month, month and a half, two months, three months, six months from now, and that's really going to be the telling picture for the rest of the game's lifespan, but... Again, we'll see how that turns out. Initially, the game is doing pretty strong, so go check it out. The campaign itself, I believe, is coming December the 8th. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it is December the 8th. All right, moving on from that, this Elder Scrolls 6 news has been getting a little bit of buzz recently, and I'm not really sure why. It's essentially been clarified that Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be a Xbox and PC only release. This is according to a new interview with Phil Spencer at GQ, which makes it plain as day that Elder Scrolls 6 will be on Xbox and PC and will not be able uh, to be played on a PlayStation. Noting... I fundamentally believe all of the platforms can continue to grow, but in order to be on Xbox, I want us to be able to bring the full complete package on what we have, and that would be true when I think about Elder Scrolls 6, that would be true when I think about any of our franchises. Obviously, uh, you as a PC gamer do not have to worry, since Microsoft is bringing all their games to uh, Xbox and PC now, and they're bringing it to Steam, they're bringing it to Game Pass, so on the PC ecosystem, you're going to be able to play the game, and, um, you know... I am not sure why it was a thing on social media for so long that people were just kind of, I don't know, like denying it that the game was not, that the game was going to be an Xbox and PC exclusive. For some reason, for a long time, people thought Starfield was going to be on PlayStation. People thought Elder Scrolls 6 was going to be on PlayStation. Guys, you just have to assess how much money Microsoft dropped on acquiring ZeniMax, Bethesda, all those studios. It is not so they can release the games onto their competitor's platform. That's just not going to be the case. If Microsoft isn't going out to release Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Whips, uh, Wisps on the PlayStation platforms, do you think they're going to go out and release The Elder Scrolls 6 on PlayStation? I mean, things can change. Things 
Or uh, there could be some sort of partnership worked out. I don't know, but I find it highly, 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 incredibly unlikely that Microsoft would drop billions upon billions of dollars to acquire ZeniMax only to release the game on the PlayStation 5 on top of uh, Xbox and you might be like, hey, they released Ori on Nintendo Switch, but I don't really view the Nintendo Switch as a direct competitor to Xbox. PlayStation and Xbox are direct competitors to each other. Nintendo and their platforms I've always seen kind of on their own island, and everybody just kind of buys a Nintendo platform to play the Nintendo first-party games, but uh, yeah, in the case of PlayStation and Xbox, to a lot of people that are console-only people, you're only going to be buying one of those consoles. You're not getting an Xbox and a PlayStation 5. Just ask the people you know that are console gamers what if they own an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4, or both. I refrain from using next-generation consoles because so many people don't have them, but a lot of people these days have an X1 or a PS4. Uh, I hardly know that many people that have both consoles. It just doesn't happen. You get one or the other, and I do know a lot of people that have an Xbox One and a Nintendo Switch or a PlayStation 4 and a Nintendo Switch, but never like an Xbox One and a PS4, um, you know, unless they're super, super hardcore and they're trying to play everything. But like I've always said, the uh, amount of emphasis that's going to be put on having both those consoles, I just think it's not that heavy. You get one or the other, and Microsoft wants you to stay within their ecosystem. They want you to either buy games on Xbox, sign up to Xbox Game Pass, uh, they'll bring their games on PC... Uh, and I don't know if Microsoft would generally agree with me, but I don't think that competition between PC and consoles is as pronounced as console versus console when it is Xbox and PlayStation. In my opinion, that is based off a lot of anecdotes, but I think it has been played out uh, pretty seemingly as far as what we've seen, especially because now Sony is bringing their games to PC as well, so there you go with that. Lastly, I do want to note a fantastic game in Hellblade Senwa's Sacrifice has now been enhanced for PC. I believe it's also being enhanced on Xbox Series X and S. Yes, it is. Relive Senwa's journey with improved visuals, DirectX ray tracing, uh, NVIDIA DLSS, AMD FSR support, and more. So a lot of upgrades in the new build includes uh, ray tracing presets for low, medium, and high, ray trace reflections, plus ray trace shadows exclusive to the high preset. We think that brings a new depth to how I'm never seen before, so we're excited for people to retread Senwa Steps in an even more immersive environment. Of course, Hellblade 2 isn't developed by Ninja Theory, another studio that Microsoft has acquired, and this upgrade I don't think is available on PlayStation, it's just available on Xbox and PC, so there you go again. Um, game was very good, not the lengthiest game in the world, but it's also a budget title, it was released at like 30 bucks. Hellblade 2, I do believe, is going to be a big budget game, and it's going to be a full $60 release, but it will be available on Game Pass as well. I believe Hellblade, uh, Cinema Sacrifice is on Game Pass, so you can play it that way, uh, at least it should be since it's a Microsoft own studio now, but yeah, Ninja Theory, super talented studio. Nice to see this great game get an upgrade as well. But that's going to do it for me again. Let me know if you've played the Halo Infinite multiplayer. Not really something that I'm overly excited about compared to everybody else. This has been the talk of the town recently as far as gaming goes. But Elder Scrolls 6, on the other hand, Xbox and PC only. Think that that should have been obvious to people. And Hellblade 10 was sacrificed now enhanced on PC. That's going to do it for me. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting, but as always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.